Hello, my friends. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're joining me here for this creativity um, coaching adventure. I'm hoping that over the course of the next five weeks that we will be able to tap into a greater sense of your own creativity and enhance your life with it. So we're going to start off. I'll just tell you a little bit about me and then the course and what to expect. So um, I have a, an intro in my in my keynote, but I am eager to provide you with some new thinking, some new perspectives, hopefully, that will allow you to dig deep and access your own inner self and creativity. We often impede our own ability to create by a number of different blocking mechanisms. And so this is really meant to allow you to, to figure out that you are indeed creative. We're all creative. We're creative in different ways. And we also block ourselves to a greater or lesser extent in terms of our own creativity. So what I'm hoping to do is to introduce you to some different, a different focus each week. And in order to make it effective for you to internalize the information and to try it on and see if it's useful to you, I would ask that you take some time to work with the engagement that I recommend, the, the activity with which I want you to engage. The more that you put into engaging with the activity, the more you'll unconceal or tap into your own internal wisdom and learn something important about yourself. So just as you've seen in many self-help books that say, don't just read it, but actually take the time to try the activities, this too is a recommendation for this adventure together. So take it a week at a time, let it sink in and we'll have some fun. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Okay, creativity. This is a coaching adventure. And I'm gonna see if I can actually have my image not shown while we talk. There we go. Okay. Five weeks of engaging with your own creative genius. So this is a brief bio. I am highly educated as an artist, a scientist, and a life coach. I am ancient and I draw from my trainings as well as life experiences to offer new perspectives and share tools and techniques that may make life better for you. That's my hope. Let me know. So basically we're gonna look at different thoughts about creativity and each week have a different focus. We also will have a recommended engagement or activity that will help us to illustrate the foci week after week. And there will be a list of some further activities or further engagement for you to take place in, take part in, in order to further deepen your understanding of what it is we're trying to look at. And then I will tell you what materials you may need in order to successfully engage with the activity. So creativity is a process of creating. And whether we are conscious of it or not, we create our lives. We create it. We have choices about it. And one of the th things that we're going to do is examine how we make those choices. So in this first week, we are looking out. So looking out is one of the, um, I won't say it's a block to creativity, but it is an impediment to realizing that your life is created by you. That is, your choices and how you interact with your life. 
the relationship you have to life. All meaning is within, it's within ourselves. We create the meaning. And when we look out to find out about life, and when we look out to find our creativity, this blocks the inner experience. So we are meaning making machines. And the definition of anything is made up. But what I want you to just try is to take a word that is completely made up, it's not a real word, proscandifulous, and make up a meaning. And just do a little metacognition, notice how easy it is to make up a meaning for that word. In contrast to that, when you try to make up a word, you will find that it's actually a lot more difficult. It's easy and natural to make meaning and to interpret everything we encounter in life. So why do I think living is creative? I think it's creative because we choose how we respond or react to every circumstance, every trauma, every success, and every day of our lives. We choose, when we choose, that is a creative act. And if we are aware, awake, mindful, and conscious, we might make different choices. So when we become aware that we are creating our lives through our choices, we can purposefully make different choices so that we may choose a more creative path or a path that we think of as more creative. So here's the question. Does this following sentence feel true to you? I am not very creative. Many, many of us have said that over the years. We've said that we aren't very creative. We don't have time to be creative. We have to hurry and, and just get something done. We have to be efficient. We can't take the time to make choices that are seemingly more creative. The truths, though, the truths are that we all create our lives. We all have choices in how we create them. We all have the potential to enhance our perception of our own creativity by exploring our choices. So when you become conscious of your choices, and I'm not saying that you have choice over everything, because that's not true. We all have circumstances that we did not choose. We all have situations that we get into that we would not have chosen. And sometimes other choices are made for us, whether by a parent, a teacher, a school, an institution, our jobs, or whatever. And those institutions or parents or teachers or, or whomever is making that choice, they are then limiting your choices. However, you have the choice of how you react to those circumstances, how you think about those circumstances, what meaning you give to those circumstances, and those are creative acts. So we are seduced by the illusion that hearing accolades from the outside or getting approval from others from outside of ourselves that that makes us better, that that makes us more important, that that essentially validates our creativity. And we love getting our successes, the notches on our belts. And we forget that all of life, everything that is meaningful in your life is within. It is within you. So regardless of the external accolades or approval or, or disapproval, regardless of anything that comes from without, 
your life and your experience is derived from you, yourself, from within yourself. So there are thoughts that we can have that block creativity and they are all derived from looking out, looking to the outside world and taking the information from what others think or feel as truth. So it blocks our creativity when we think something like, everyone watches and judges me. We've all thought that, we've all felt watched and judged. And in fact, we probably are for a large measure of our lives. People do watch us, people do judge us, maybe not as much as we think, but they do. But does that mean that you have to judge yourself or take their judgment as the gospel truth? Is it true? It may be true that they watch and judge you, but is what they judge, is what their judgment is, is that true? Well, it may or may not be, but it's not automatically true. And people will judge you, but you are the only person who can know you. Another block to creativity is comparison. When we compare ourselves with others, we limit our ability to make independent choices, to make novel choices, to make creative choices. And so when we say something like, I'm not really creative, not like a real artist, that puts us into a place where we are, un, are, are not allowed to create, not allowed to make the choices that would truly express ourselves. And the question is, when we say something like, I'm not really creative, not like a real artist, we're saying that there's something different about the way we create and make choices and someone in quotes, like a real artist does, a real artist, and we should finish that sentence for ourselves, a real artist, creates by X, Y, Z. Maybe you're thinking of the creative efforts of, of someone who paints or draws or someone who makes music. And that is one end of the spectrum. But in fact, all of creativity is a spectrum. Creativity may be as simple as creating the, the sequence of your day to meet your needs, to meet your children's needs or your parents' needs, to, to try and, and, and appreciate the moment. So when you appreciate the moment, that is a creative act. And so by declaring, I'm not really creative, not like a real artist, we're putting ourselves in a box and that blocks our ability to make choices that are truly reflective of our own values and ourselves. Another block to our creativity is perfectionism. We might think my work is not good enough. I'm not good enough. Is that true? Well, in fact, Life is imperfect. Life is imperfect. We are imperfect. And all that we do is imperfect. So the quest for perfection is really a fool's errand. It's a, it's a quixotic notion that cannot be realized. We, we can't be perfect. And one of the things that the Martha Beck uh, training, one of Martha Beck's sayings that I found particularly funny and also useful is if something is worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. <laughs> so we know that that's a little bit lighthearted in the sense of it may not be, um, it may not be completely the way we want to handle our creativity, 
but there's there's something that allows us it's some there's something freeing in that that allows us to be imperfect allows us to be human and allows us to be ourselves we don't have to be perfect we can't be perfect and so striving for perfection is using some external standard to measure ourselves against and that is definitely looking out rather than looking in. So just a way to kind of frame this, you all have, we all have a sense of pleasure. We have pleasure in eating and seeing and breathing and making love. And would we judge it to be not good enough? Could we judge our sense of pleasure to be not good enough, to not be valid and not worthy? Should we stop? No, no. Our sense of pleasure is completely unique and wholly our own. And there is no limit to the amount of pleasure that you can take in life. And it is the same exact choice of creativity. We can take pleasure in our response to life, in our creative response to life. Likewise, are my senses of delight in beauty, in smells, in wonder, not skilled enough? We, we give ourselves a standard and think we have to be skilled in order to be creative. We have to be trained. We have to have experience that we may or may not have, but we don't need to be trained to have a sense of delight, to enjoy beauty, to enjoy smells and to have a sense of wonder. They don't need to be skilled. They are part of our little animal body and brain that has a sense of delight. So when we ask ourselves, should you give up? No. Should you stop delighting in any of those things? No. And it is the same as, as in creativity. Your, your creativity does not have to be skilled to a certain point. You can be creative, make the creative choices and respond to life with creativity just by living. When we create, we expose ourselves. So create, creation, creativity is actually a matter of choices and self-expression is a matter of choice. When we express ourselves, we can be seen by other people. We can share who we are with other people. Brene Brown says, creativity is the way I share my soul with the world. And I believe that we, by our choices, share ourselves and our creativity with the world. And this is how we interact with the world and with others. So, one of the things that was interesting in the, um, in the Martha Beck training for life coaching was we learned to interpret our dreams. And we do the waking dreams as well as the sleeping dreams. One of the visualizations or waking dream that I had included a geode. It was a message and only when I thought about it for a length of time did I realize that the message was about beauty. The beauty of a geode is hidden inside the rock. The exterior is often very dull and unassuming. It looks like an ordinary rock, but inside it has beautiful crystals. And the crystals are basically colorful with inclusions of different chemicals, often flaws rather than the purity of the materials that 
crystallize inside a geode, create the magnificent beauty. And I realized that we too are like geodes. That is, we have an exterior part of us that everyone can see quite readily, but inside the beauty of each of us, each individual hidden within is made beautiful by the inclusions, by the flaws, by our disabilities, by our life experiences, both good and bad. And so it is the fact that we have these flaws hidden and exposed that make us beautiful as human beings. And finally, we ask ourselves, who would want to hear my voice? Who wants to see me? Who wants to who witness my life? Why am I sharing my life with others? And it turns out that it is the most powerful way that we can interact with one another to express and expose ourselves through our work, through our choices, through our creativity, that we have the deepest sense of connection and a sense of belonging with others in the world. So for the engagement, our engagement this week, what I'd like you to do is an inner critic collage. Now I had initially come upon this idea from a, a, another coach named Barbara Scher and the inner critic collage is meant to bring to light that hidden voice, that unconscious judgment that tells you you're not good enough, that tells you your work sucks, that tells you that nobody wants to see the creative output that you may make. And this is a very, very um, big block to expressing ourselves. So when we make our inner critic collage, you will need magazines or other images to cut out and put together different colors of paper on a nice support. So you can get some cardstock or a nice heavy paper or cardboard and glue these pieces to make a collage that represents to you that inner critic. It doesn't have to be obvious to anyone else looking at it, what it is, but it needs to call forth in you that inner voice, that inner critic that is so difficult to live with and so difficult to get around in terms of expressing yourself and expressing your creativity. Now I would take a, um, some glue or some fix it and put the, this image together. And when you do, when you make visible something that is quite um, a conceptual idea, such as the inner critic, then it's, it is a, it's almost like a journal entry. It is meant to trigger in you the remembrance of the inner critic and to bring it outside of yourself so you might engage with it. And then to reflect on the inner critic, reflect on the collage that you make and write in a journal. And the journal, what I'd like you to do, it is do the activity that has been um, written up in Martha Beck's Finding Your Own North Star, written in 2001, and it's called Whizzing on the Electric Fence. And so for each of these phrases, I would like you to complete the sentence and take your time and really think about it, really feel your way. If I didn't care what people thought, I would, If I were sure I'd succeed, I would. If I had the nerve, I would. If I could be certain it was the right choice, 
I would, if I weren't worried about the future, I would, if I had the freedom, I would, each of these phrases is meant to give you permission to actually dream of what you would do without these blockages, without these means of stopping you from being your most creative self, from living towards your dream, from essentially expressing who you are. So when you do this, it opens up tremendous possibilities in your mind. And this is the basis for extravagant creativity because you can fully express who you are, making the choices that make your heart sing. And these are the things that epitomize the most creative life access and express yourself. That is really the journey. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come back. So I hope that this gave you some ideas about what creativity is and how you might access greater creativity in your own life. And if you do the engagement and you do the collage of the inner critic and you do some of the journaling around what you would do if, these are activities that will support who you are and that will support your creativity. It will access your unique personality, your creative genius. And I hope that by next week, that will find a certain effervescence that begins to show itself as you make conscious choices to encourage yourself and your own creativity. So enjoy your week and let me know if you, if you wish how this is working for you. If there are any questions, please let me know. And I will look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.